The Forsaken are a faction of the undead that are intelligible and were able to break free from the Scourge and overtake the city of Lordaeron. They were killed during the Third War by the Death Knight known as Arthas Minethil. They now live in Undercity, which is built beneath the ruins of Lordaeron, and they're led by the Banshee Queen Sylvanas. I was requested to make a lore video on the origin story behind the Forsaken, so here it is. Let's get rolling. Alright, so as I said, the Prince Arthas led an army known as the Scourge during the Third War. They invaded Lordaeron and showed no mercy. But the humans that fell in Lordaeron were risen to become Scourge minions and basically were completely under Arthas' control and had to kill people they once knew and fought with. Illidan had attempted to destroy Northrend and failed. However, the Lich King's powers started to decay. Because of this, it caused him to be unable to control the Scourge that were further away, and that caused a lot of the undead to have their minds back. Their memories started to come back to them. The Lich King's right-hand man, Arthas, also began to weaken as the Lich King did. After this, Arthas, along with Kel'Thuzad, who was a powerful Lich and Arthas's lieutenant, were in the middle of an undead civil war, if you will, and Illidan made a second attempt to destroy the Lich King, and Arthas was still loyal to him. So he was called to return to Northrend, and he did so. Meanwhile, Kel'Thuzad was left in command of the Scourge forces. Lady Sylvanas Windrunner got a bunch of the undead forces in Lordaeron together to try to take over the entirety of the undead empire. They had cunning, manipulative leaders and banshees, and the undead were able to force some of the other forces around Lordaeron to fight with them, including factions like the Gnolls and the Ogres. Dreadlord Very Mathras pledged his loyalty to Sylvanas in exchange for his life. And with his help, they were able to get rid of Deathrock and his army, as they allied with the forces of Grand Marshal Garethos to attempt to free Lordaeron, because it was under control of the remaining Dreadlord known as Balnazar. Garethos had been known to be racist. He hated any non-humans. But he put that aside to fight with the undead and their other non-human allies. Sylvanas promised that if they won, she would let Garethos keep control of Lordaeron. So, the undead and all their allies went to slay Balnazar. The undead and their allies dismantled Balnazar's power in the city, and Verimathris destroyed his brother. Immediately after the battle was over, Garethos commanded that the Forsaken leave the land like Sylvanas had promised, and then she just killed him and claimed the ruins of Lordaeron for the now free-willed undead. So they now had control of Lordaeron, and all their enemies at the time were taken care of. So Sylvanas named this faction the Undead, the Forsaken. After this, the Queen Sylvanas and the Forsaken made the Undercity theirs, and created this huge network of crypts and catacombs that the Scourge had started long before. There are poisonous sludge rivers that go through the various routes in the Undercity, and with all the toxic fumes and putrid smells, it's almost unbearable for the living members of the Horde. Sylvanas knew she wouldn't be able to hold border on forever, so she turned to looking for allies. The Banshee Queen wanted to be assured that her and her people wouldn't have to worry about being invaded and losing Undercity since her nation was so new. So she sent several representatives to a few different factions throughout Azeroth to attempt to make allies. Archdruid Hamul Rune Totem, a torn of Thunderbluff, saw good in the Forsaken and knew they could be redeemed. The Torn talks the War Chief of the Horde, Thrall, into allowing the Forsaken to join the ranks of the Horde. This greatly increased the Forsaken's chances to defeat the Lich King, just exponentially, even though the Horde didn't really gain much by forming this alliance with them. The Darkspear Trolls were against the Forsaken because of their use of shamans, but they learned that they could trust them and fight alongside them in time. The Forsaken were the main group of Horde in the Eastern Kingdoms, so they had to deal with enemies that surrounded them. Lady Sylvanas would free more undead, and they would join the ranks of the Forsaken and assist in tasks in their nation, the Terrestrial Glades. Inside the Terrestrial Glades, there were two main factions, the Forsaken of course, and the remaining ranks of the Scarlet Crusade. The Scarlet Crusade's main goal was complete genocide on the undead. It didn't matter what their alignment was. So this, of course, included Sylvanas and her people. So this was a 
pretty big potential threat to them. The Argent Dawn offered to help the Forsaken against the Crusade because they were constantly harassing the Forsaken. The Forsaken began to march into the stronghold of the Scarlet Crusade and Eastern Terrestrial Glades, known as the Scarlet Monastery, so they could try to secure the land within their borders. Along with this, they also had multiple issues they had to attend to involving the neighboring humans and dwarves of the Alliance. They made several attacks on their enemies, and this created a war for resources in Arathi, and the Defilers were told to secure them, along with more battles in the Plaguelands, Hillsbrad, and Alterac. And on top of all this, the Royal Apothecary Society began to research a type of plague that could be used to take out the Scourge. Lady Sylvanas raised someone as a champion of the Forsaken after the Scourge had killed him. He was named Nathanos Whitecaller. He had told Forsaken members to kill the creature that killed him in life, and to collect a document about his and Sylvanas' time as the living from Quellithian Lodge, which was basically just a lodge of exiled elves. Okay, so some time went on, and the Blood Elves who inhabited Quelthalas had just gotten their powers back, so they began to destroy the Scourge and reclaim their city. This was Sylvanas' homeland when she was alive, so she offered to support them in any way she could, and obviously she was also a huge supporter for allowing them to join the ranks of the Horde. The Forsaken and the Sindori, now united, started to reclaim the Ghostlands, including the small town called Tranquilin. Meanwhile, the Forsaken would continue researching the disease they were trying to create in Outland, and people like Apothecary Azathen experimented with some of the new ingredients found there. Alright, so later on the Lich King started to make a scene, so everyone on Azeroth would know that he is coming out of the woodworks. The Forsaken were coming closer to their revenge, and they acted as one of the main forces on the war against the Lich King. Lady Sylvanas regularly traveled between Tristful Glades and Northrend, as she monitored the construction of a Forsaken village in Howling Ford. There was a new camp called New Agamand, and many of the Royal Apothecary Society's members lived there as they finished perfecting their plague, with plans to release it on the Lich King. Sylvanas was eager to test this disease, because she had been overseeing its creation for years at this point. Now the time had finally come. The Lich King made his first attacks on cities of the Horde and the Alliance, and Grand Apothecary Putris made a camp in Shatrath City to defend it against the Lich King's own plague. After a lot of trial and error, Putris was able to create a counter-agent and was able to stop the spread of this plague. He became well known after this, and Sylvanas sent him to battle with the Horde advance in the Northrend. The Scourge launched an attack on Orgrimmar while both Sylvanas and Putris were there. They fought alongside Thrall, Garrosh Hellscream, and High Overlord Sorfang, and a few heroes were there to help fight them off. And this is when Thrall decided to launch an offensive into Northrend. So, the Forsaken were the main faction to advance through Northrend, while most of the Horde took over areas of Boring Tundra. And the Forsaken fleet sailed upon Howling Ford and laid siege. A regiment of the Forsaken, known as the Hand of Vengeance, came flying their banner, and they were tasked with one goal deliver revenge on to Arthas. Prince Valinar, a servant of Arthas, asked the Forsaken commander, who was named High Executor Anselm, if he wanted to denounce his loyalty to Sylvanas and come battle with the Scourge. And uh, Anselm just had the Sand Lane Prince disposed of quickly, he had his assistants kill him right there. Another group the Hand of Vengeance were fighting in Northrend were the Vrykul and the Royal Apothecary Society used this to their advantage and used it as a chance to test their plague and they drenched a bunch of them with this blight. In Dragon Blight, the Forsaken from New Agaman brought the strain of plague over to those stationed at Venom Spike and Agmar's Hammer so they could perfect it. And they also happened to run in with one of their oldest enemies while they were there, the Scarlet Crusade. Well, it was a faction that splintered off from them, known as the Scarlet Onslaught. Now, the Forsaken were about to peek and get what they'd been seeking for so long, but a tragedy happened, and something went horribly, just terribly wrong for them. It was during the battle with 
Angrathar the Wrathgate and Grand Apothecary Putris and some Plague Bringers showed up. They asked the new Lich King if he thought the Forsaken had either forgotten or forgiven what he'd done. Then Putris doused the entire battlefield in a strain of blight, which made it impossible for the Horde and Alliance forces to collaborate. It was even powerful enough to bring Arthas himself down to his knees. So he went back to Ice Crown, and Putris just laughed at the death he brought on from his plague. Sylvanas was barely able to make it out alive, and the remaining Forsaken were taken in by Thrall while they planned the next attack. Thrall and Sylvanas were talking with Jaina Proudmore, and they revealed that Putris allied with the Dreadlord Barry Mathras so he could end Sylvanas' rule. And then Jaina said, even though Putris was acting outside the orders of the Forsaken and the Horde, that King Varian Wren still held them responsible and was thinking about attacking Undercity to reclaim Lordaeron for the Alliance. During all of this, Vary Mathras had already taken control of the Undercity, so Sylvanas, Thrall, and Vol'jin made a counterattack to take Vary Mathras out of power and get the Undercity back for the Forsaken. They fought their way through the city that was controlled by the Burning Legion, and Sylvanas and the War Chief were able to destroy Vary Mathras and retake the Royal Quarter. Unfortunately, just as they were about to take out Putris, King Varian came in and said he was going to end everything right there. But luckily, before things escalated too much, Jaina teleported all the Alliance forces out of the Undercity so the Horde could restore the city. So now Undercity was restored, however Thrall had lost all trust in the Forsaken because of the events at Wrathgate. Korkron Overseers were made to watch over the Forsaken from then on. On top of this, they also lost all credibility with the rest of the Horde as well. Now that Undercity was safe, Sylvanas personally went to Northrend to get her vengeance on Arthas. With the Dark Rangers, Sylvanas attacked Ice Crown Citadel and fought through the Halls of Reflection where she came face to face with Arthas, wielding Frostmourne, the blade that took her life. And Arthas fought her off and Sylvanas realized she couldn't beat him alone. The Argent Crusade and the Knights of the Ebon Blade combined their efforts and were able to destroy the Lich King. But now there is a void for Sylvanas. She and the Forsaken only existed to get vengeance on Arthas, but now they never could. Now the Forsaken did definitely partake in the fall of the Lich King, and now that he was out of the way and Bolvar Fordragon took Arthas' place, the Forsaken turned to other pursuits. When the Lich King was killed, some of the smarter former Scourge members were allowed into the Forsaken by Sylvanas. The Valkyr brought something new to the Forsaken, the ability to quote-unquote procreate with their necromantic abilities, which could help their numbers increase tremendously. In the second generation Forsaken were those who were raised into undeath by the Valkyr. Those in the new Forsaken generation are allowed to choose what they want to do after they're reborn. Some, like Valdred Moray, decide to stay loyal and agree to serve the Forsaken. Or Prince Galen Trollbane, he didn't really want to kill his former allies, so he gave the quest to slay them for the Dark Lady. However, some don't always react like this. Lillian Voss, for example, was horrified when she saw what she'd become. Marshal Redpath was also unhappy with what happened, and he attacked Death Knell right after his transition. Some of the next generation Forsaken literally kill themselves right on the spot, just right there. And some just go completely insane. Dumas lost all rational thought after being resurrected by the Valkyr. After the shattering, Garrosh Hellscream ordered the Forsaken to attack Gilneas, and they did so. They took a more offensive stance on the War of the Alliance, and now they had a grasp on Lordaeron and their land better than ever before with their numbers so high. The Forsaken began to fortify their territories and create their own architecture. They finally seemed to have everything secure. And that's pretty much all of the main story of the Forsaken so far. You know, they've also made appearances in Draenor and now against the Burning Legion as they've returned, and they continue to fight alongside the Horde. But yeah, alright guys, I appreciate you watching, uh, please leave any feedback you may have in the comments, and if you enjoyed, please leave a like, or subscribe if you're inclined to. 
and I will see you next time.